The next person that I'm going to have come up here now is a person that I have wanted to talk to on this telecast for a long time. And it's a very interesting situation, and to tell you the truth, I'm uh, somewhat lost for words, and you'll see why. I'll give you a little background on it. Some months ago in a certain city, I had a meeting and I walked through the congregation before the meeting began to greet the people as I do most of the time. And there I met a 13-year-old boy who told me that he had been exposed to the drug scene ever since he was seven years old. By the time this young man was nine and ten years old, as I recall, he was not only a drug addict, but he was also a drug pusher. So when he was about 12 or 13 years old, he became very tired of that drug scene at that early age, but he was hooked and didn't know what to do. So he ran away from the home environment that he was in, where the drugs were. Went to live with his grandmother. And said to his grandmother, Grandma, what can I do? Said, I, I, I have these urges for, for drugs. And I want to break this habit. He says, but these urges just, just overpower me. His grandmother said to him, son, he says, write a, write a letter to Reverend Ike and ask him to help you. Ask him to pray for you. And that young man, about 13, 12, 13 years old at that time, wrote me a letter. still writes to me and I carry some of his letters around with me. And when he wrote me that letter, he released something within himself. He released faith, he released power within himself with that letter so that it helped him to break the drug habit. And when I met him a few months ago, I asked him, I said, son, are you now free of drugs? Are you now free of the drug habit? And he said to me, yes, Reverend Ike, I am. And whenever these urges would come to him for drugs and narcotics, it helps him to release his faith and to release the power within him by just writing me a letter. Because you see, the moment you think about me, you communicate with me in the mind of God. That young man, That young man is here with us today, and I'm not even going to give his last name or tell you where he's from, but he's Marvin. He's now 14 years of age, and he's off of drugs. Marvin, come on up here, son. Let me talk to you for a little while. Give him a great big hand. Let's stand and welcome him. Come on, and, and let's give him our love and our blessing and our help. Come on, give me a great big rib-cracking hug. Love lifted me, love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me. I'm going to let Marvin talk to us for just a moment and in a, in a little while. But I want to tell you something, Marvin. I'll never forget the first time I met you. 
And uh, as I say, I'm not even going to say where because there's so much involved here. But that first meeting when he met me and told me that he had been writing to me and how it had helped him, it, it touched me so much. And as I walked off of the platform at the meeting that day, I remember he ran up to the platform and he yelled to me as I was going in the dressing room to catch my breath to change clothes, to take the plane back here to New York. His words were to me, he says, Reverend Ike, keep praying for me. Oh. And he's been writing to me, and I put one of his letters in a recent issue of our Action magazine, and when I saw him the other day, he wants, wanted to know from me, do you read my letters? I said, I carry your letters around with me many times because I just never forgot about him. I never forgot about you, and I, I never told you this, but I'll tell you this. When I got on that plane that day, all the way back to New York, and it was a six-hour flight. It was from the West Coast, I'll tell you that much anyway. It was a, no, about a four- or five-hour flight. I could hear you saying, Reverend Ike, pray for me. And, you know, I pick you up in the universal subconscious. I am a practitioner of mind science, and I know how it works. And when you think about me, you make connections with me. The moment you think about me, Marvin, you pick up my thoughts in the mind of God, and that's, that's how I help you. And so to show you that I do read your letters, and I do get them. See, I put one in the magazine, and, and here it is. He said, Reverend Ike, this is your boy Marvin. I'm going to tell you what happened to me. I was at a wrestling match, and all at once I needed some kind of drug. I started, I started crying. I came home, and I walked into my room, and my grandmother heard me, and she asked me what was wrong with me, and I told her I had felt a craving for drugs. She said for me to go to bed, and in the morning write Reverend Ike. So I wrote your letter, and I felt a lot better. Pray for me. I'll be watching you on television. And you'll be watching you on television, too. <laughs> and his grandmother is here with him. Grandmother, come on up here and stand on the other side. And let's give his grandmother a great big hand of welcome as, as she comes. Come a little further this way, Marvin. You know, she has 36 grandchildren, and this one turned to her with a drug problem. Isn't it so beautiful and sweet? Grandmother, stand over here. Just put some lipstick on this side. All right. <laughs> Marvin, are you still off of drugs? Yes, I am. You sure? I'm positive. How old did you say you were when you were first exposed to drugs? Uh, I first seen it when I was seven. I started smoking marijuana when I was nine. You said you, you, were, pretty, you were trafficking in that? Yes. At school? Yep. I couldn't, I, I don't want to tell who for. You can understand, there are all sorts of reasons. You who've heard me before you, I could say it, but not on television. So many things involved. Now, Marvin, there's something else also that I wanted to talk with you about that you mentioned to me when I saw you a few weeks ago. You told me that at times you had had the urge for drugs and so on, and you'd write me a letter and it would help, and you would talk to your grandmother and that would help. I want to point out to you this that in the world today, there's so many things that will confront us. And I don't want you to think it's unusual for you to be confronted with these things. And I want you to know that the presence and the power of God within you is able not only to get you away from drugs as it did, but to keep you away from drugs. So don't you forget about the power of God within you that's able to keep you from drugs, all right? I won't. 
and I'm going to do for Marvin and all of the people who have drug problems what I did for him when I first met him. I'm going to have this whole congregation stand right now, and Marvin, we are going to give you a massive dose of love power. Ha-ha! To encourage you and to lift you and to take you on your way and to keep you off of those drugs. Those of you who are watching this telecast, if you have a loved one, a friend, a someone that you know who needs help with the drug problem, you stand too there in your home. If you're in the bar, and I'm glad a lot of people watch me from the bar rooms, put down your glass for a moment and slide off the stool if you can. <laughs> and right there in the bar, we're going to give a healing and blessing love treatment for all of the people who've been having drug problems. And Marvin, while we are going to say this affirmation with you here, I want you to repeat it out loudly and clear with us along with your grandmother. And all of you people, the thousands of you here down below, and those of you in the balcony here at United Church in New York, I want you to lift your hands toward Marvin. Come on, everybody. Let's give him a good love treatment. Let's give him a good blessing treatment. And I want you to say this to Marvin, and I want you to say this to all of the people that you know of who need a good treatment for getting off of the drug scene and keeping off of the drug scene. Repeat this with me. Marvin! Marvin! I give you a love treatment. I Right now. right now, the power of God in you, God in you. is greater than any urge for drugs or narcotics. The power of God in you keeps you, keeps you. encourages you, blesses you, blesses you. And, lifts you, and lifts you, and goes with you. And to all of those who have a drug problem, I say to you, the power of God is within you. The presence of God is within you. And right now, this presence, this power breaks the chain of narcotics from your life, from your life. The, power of God in you the power of God in you sets you free. Sets you free. The, love of God the love of God sets you free. When we teach people about the power and the presence of God within and they find the presence and the power of God within, they're automatically set free from drugs and whatever hang-ups they have. Isn't that wonderful? Bless you, Marvin. Our love is with you always.